Well, uh, hello, good evening, everybody. Most everybody, at least on the computer, has their video on. Uh, welcome to those of you on Zoom, and welcome to those of you on Facebook Live. Uh, good to uh, good to see faces and be with you tonight. Um, for those of you that don't uh, know me, I, my name is Susie Tierney. I'm the executive director of Just Faith Ministries, That's and good. I'm going to do just a little bit of housekeeping and share a few announcements with you before Alex uh, launches in and, you know, walks you through Zoom. And then, um, you know, e she even has uh, some time uh, built in at the end uh, for you all to play and test some things out if you want to uh, uh, stay on the call, stay on the Zoom and uh, test some of the So, um, I always like to start by just saying uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I looked at the list of folks that were going to be joining us on this call, and many of you are uh, folks who have been facilitating our programs for years. And just just know that we're just, uh, it's just so grateful for you and all your efforts. Um, and we and you all, everybody, uh, you on Facebook Live, you on Zoom, you continue to be in our thoughts and prayers every day as we negotiate this time. So do know that. Um, I, I want to say out loud that we. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, we have um, created virtual adaptations for all our programs. Um, really, in a nutshell, what that means is our, our director of programs, Kristen Dollar, um, she's taken our programs, uh, went through every session, looked at places where you might need to nuance um, uh, to do something else virtually, and she's come up with a, a page or two of slight adaptations that you'll have to make um, to do our programs for, uh, virtually. Um, we actually have some folks that are already doing our programs virtually or continuing programs um, that they started before the distancing, of course, happened. And so, um, I, it, it, Susan Stahl, I thought I saw you. Um, at 20 seconds, how's it going virtually for you? Um, it's actually going great. Uh, we are, we have been meeting weekly since um, we decided we should not be meeting in person and um, we are adapting. We're doing one of the faith um, and race uh, sessions and it's, it's been great and it's been really powerful um, to be able to see people's faces and to continue the community that we had already started to build. So it's been terrific. Fantastic. So there you are. So it, it's very doable. Um, a few other announcements I just want to share with you. Um, we are uh, of note, uh, we are launching a revised version of an, a revised and updated um, version of the Engaging Spirituality program. Um, the program materials for that uh, will be available on May 4th. I, I bring that up specifically because um, ES would be a, um, the, the format of engaging spirituality or ES, it, it lends itself to a virtual um, group, um, even more, I would say, than a lot of our other programs. So it's just a really contemplative program that has a the balance between the contemplative piece and the action piece. Um, so just know that we are launching that. Um, and it would be a great option at this time for those of you that are thinking about um, maybe offering a, a virtual program locally. I will also tell you that Just Faith Ministries is going to host three engaging spirituality small groups. Um, and so look for information about that to come across your desk. What that means is the first 10 people um, that sign up for each of those groups will host a group um, of engaging spirituality, uh, probably starting about mid-May. Um, so you'll see announcements about that pretty soon. Um, I will put in a pitch here, if you are interested in facilitating one of those small groups, um, we do have some facilitators, um, but if, if you wanna give it a try, uh, we will pair you up with somebody and um, you know, be sure to either send me an email, susie at justfaith.org, or put something in the chat and let me know that you're interested in that. Um, I also want to say that we, 
Our uh, registration and resource manager, Susan Chapman, has put together a list of several platforms for video conferencing. So Zoom is the one that we're going to um, show you all tonight. Alex is going to, you know, walk through Zoom. But just know that, uh, you know, if Zoom isn't the tool that you ultimately want to use, that uh, there are some other platforms um, that might work for you um, to also do meetings. Um, the assumption that we're going to make is that that you all need to get your own Zoom accounts for yourself and your churches. Um, and, and that just uh, logistically, it would be too difficult for us, I think, um, to, to try to monitor multiple people um, through Zoom. Um, but I would I would just recommend getting your own account to, uh, to do virtual groups for a number of reasons. And that is that you can't do anything um, in person right now. So it would serve it would serve you well in a lot of other ways beyond our programs. However, I also want to say, if getting a Zoom account is a barrier to anybody on this phone, reach out to me and, and we can talk. Um, the other benefit to Zoom is, of course, you can host grad gatherings of other folks who have been through our programs in your areas and virtual get togethers. So just a lot of things that you can do. Um, the last two, the last thing that I do want to say, and then I'm going to introduce Alex and let her take it away, is um, we have an outreach and engagement associate. Her name is Leela Oakley, and uh, Leela might even be on the call, but uh, Leela is like your go-to gal. If you have a facilitation question, you want to get a group up and going, you want to talk through some options about what you might be able to do what you can do, how you work with our resources. Leela, Leela is your person. So it's just Leela, L-E-I-L-A, at justfaith.org. And I will put uh, my email and Leela's in the chat box. Uh, so you all should be able to see that come up on chat. And with that, let me introduce Alex, who has just been a real gift to us. Um, uh, one of our board members connected us with Alex, and she has been just lovely and so willing to help us negotiate, uh, uh, trying to help folks who want to do our programs and want to connect with each other just in general, uh, figure out this Zoom thing. Um, just a little bio about Alex and then she can take it away. Alex uh, believes that change is accomplished when we invest in human potential. Um, as a project manager of new ventures at Year Up, of New Ventures at Year Up, a national workforce development organization, Alex leverages her leadership organizational and facilitational skills to steward innovative ideas to implement in order to achieve the mission of closing the opportunity divide. She finds joy in working on teams to solve problems, facilitating trainings, accompanying young professionals, organizing project plans and spending time in conversation. And from Massachusetts, from Massachusetts, Alex currently lives in Chicago and is known as someone who loves to attend all sorts of musical, cultural, and or food related events happening across uh, this uh, fantastic city of Chicago. And she will never evidently turn down an ice cream cone. She's my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and our and our uh, host tonight, Alex Barrett. Alex, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. Thank you, Susie. Um, I uh, am going to go ahead and present my screen. So in a moment, you should be able to see a slide deck that I have. Um, and feel free to call out if you can't or you're having some technical issues. But this is going to be the deck that um, shares a lot of the contact content as we go through this. Um, and I'm really excited to share a little bit more about how um, I'm thinking that the next um, 45 minutes or so will go um, with, with this agenda. So really the main goal of today is, um, is making sure that you all feel a little more comfortable in Zoom and have the basic, basic sort of tools in your tool belts to be able to start facilitating some groups in, um, in Zoom or in another platform, but this will be focused on Zoom. Um, and what I'll, what I'll say is that I've, um, I 
Susie mentioned the organization I work at. Um, I was I did this as we transitioned. We work with 18 to 24 year olds and transitioned to whole virtual learning to a whole virtual learning environment a couple of weeks ago. So that's sort of where uh, where the majority of my experience is coming for this. So what I'm hoping today to do is first set some norms. I always like to start a meeting like this with just some agreements and things um, that we can all be thinking about as we enter into an hour together. Um, then I will ask a silly warm up question to get some some voices in the room um, and just hear uh, and also uh, test out this chat window feature. Um, I'll go through what is Zoom, how to use Zoom, some things around sharing a screen, how to do exactly what I'm doing right now, how to make some smaller breakout groups, and some settings that you should be paying attention to. Um, we'll test, test that breakout rooms feature and see it in action. Um, we'll talk a little bit about keeping Zoom secure. I know that folks have been aware often of the news of sort of uh, what has been known as Zoom bombing. And so I'll, I'll speak a little bit to that. And then um, I will wrap with questions. I'll hang out for as long as we, as we need to, to, if anyone wants to test some things or has some follow-up questions. So that is how I'm thinking about the next little time. Um, and so I am going to go over to our norms. Um, norms are something that um, I think are a really important way to sort of set the tone for us. And there's a couple here. I know that folks might be able to read them on the screen. I'll, I'll read them and then add a little bit of additional voiceover why I think it's important. Um, and these sort of you can see are reflected in some of the norms um, and group guidelines for virtual communication that Just Faith Ministries has in your facilitator account. Um, it is also included in this deck that we'll, we'll share out um, for you as a resource as well after this. So first that um, I invite all of us to participate fully um, and sort of share in the responsibility of we're all learning here. Um, and so that's something I really want to uh, invite everyone to, to participate, sort of engage with this and, and be, be willing to make some mistakes in this um, because that links to the very last bullet on here that perfection is not the goal. So I think that's something where right now a really helpful thing in, in my life, in my work has been reminding myself that Right now we are in triage, not in like best practices mode. We're not trying to get, do the best virtual meeting ever. Um, I'm not trying to do the best meeting ever, the most perfect meeting and training ever right now. Um, I, I want us to get what we need to get out of this and, um, and know that that's, that's do the best with what we can right now. The next thing is I, we've already, already uh, leaned into this, um, is turning on your video. I think this is really important, um, particularly as you think about facilitating group meetings. Um, I think it, uh, it was mentioned before that being able to see each other's faces is just a way, especially when um, we are trying to build connections in a, and we're so far away from each other, seeing someone else's face, being able to sort of acknowledge and see the nonverbal sort of nods and like smiles and questioning faces that across the screen. Right now I can see uh, a number of your faces across the screen as I present and it's really helpful for me because I'm like, okay, they're nodding, they're, 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 they hear what I'm saying, they're tracking along. Um, so that's a really important one in a virtual environment. It, it, it really enhances that connection an opportunity for connection if, if folks are able. I know that um, folks might be calling on, on phones or other methods. I will ask folks that you are more than welcome to interrupt me with questions at any point. Um, so go ahead and interrupt me. Um, that's a norm I'd want to set. And, um, and with that, if, if you're having trouble interrupting me um, or, and are coming off mute and need a little bit of help, um, use the chat window to be able to, um, to ask a question here. Um, so for example, I see Claire asking how to Zoom balance everyone using video versus bandwidth issues. Zoom itself is pretty strong bandwidth wise. Sometimes your local, your own personal Wi-Fi might not be as strong. Um, so that if you are having connectivity issues, I would recommend turning off your video often it enhances the audio and make sure it's not as choppy for you. So if anyone's experiencing that um, would, would encourage that, but um, that's, a, that's a great question. So great, we're living our norms already, interrupting and using the chat window to be able to ask questions live. Um, 
and so the, these are the ways that I, I would hope that you all engage with this as we go forward. Um, I will pause for questions or any sort of additional comments that you would ask of me as a trainer in this space. Awesome. Now I want to hear from a couple more of you. Um, so in my work, I often do a warm-up question. This is a really great way, and I would encourage it if you can do it in your sessions even. It's a really great way to get voices into, into the quote-unquote virtual room. Like have people be able to um, come off mute, answer a question. It can be silly. You can just make a smile. It doesn't have to be related to the topic sometimes. Um, so I'd love folks to go ahead and put in the chat window um, either answers to this question or I'll take like two or three people to come off mute and just share your name, where you're located and your answer. So the question is, what fictional world or universe would you most like to live in? So think about maybe a favorite book, a favorite movie, a TV series, um, something that would be really fun um, that you think to, to, to be able to live in. Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. Hey, Thanks, Russ. I heard someone else come off mute. Yeah, Alex, um, we had a question on the chat asking if everyone can see the chat. Yes, good. Thank you. I had meant to, meant to indicate where that is. So folks, um, if folks are on computers right now, on your screen, on the very bottom bar, there should be a little um, sort of talk bubble that says chat underneath it. Um, okay. And if you're able to click on that, um, then you can pull up the chat window. Um, you have to move your arrow down there. Yeah, exactly. So go ahead and you, you can click on that and it should pop up a little, little chat window on the, I think it's typically on the right, um, and you're able to chat into that box there. And you can move it around. Mm -hmm. You can move it around the chat box. You can move around. You could pop it out if you wanted to. And size it. Thank you for that question. Oh, I love these coming in. Oh, and it's top right on an iPad. Okay, great to know. I haven't I haven't tested this myself on a on a um, iPad, so I would would definitely ask folks to chime in with things that they're um, experiencing on the iPad. Awesome. Saturn, love it. Jane Austen's world, Little Woman, Hogwarts, love these. Is there one or two more that would want to maybe come off mute and share your voice with this group? This is Susan Stahl. I'm with Susie. I want to be where Wonder Woman lives. That's exactly where I want to be. I'm cracking up that you put that. I love it. Alex, this well, is yes. Oh, I'm sorry. If that was it, then that's fine. I, I, I you are our last one, please. Susan. <laughs> I said Saturn, but I like that better. <laughs> I'm glad there's some uh, <laughs> some agreement in some of these fun wor worlds. Um, I love it. So I, I'm going to take the moment now to make sure that we um, know where some of I know I've. We mentioned this as we were coming on, that we know where some of these functions are that we're, we're even starting to use right now and we're getting some questions about right now. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of like a tour around what you should see on your screen. Um, and so welcome to the Zoom world. We are now going on a Zoom tour. This is the fictional world we are, we are using right now. Um, so first of all, um, at your bottom left corner, um, you should be able to see a mute and a video button. So those are the ones that um, I'm not sure exactly where it is on an iPad or a, a, a iPhone, um, but there is where you can mute and unmute yourself, and that's where you can turn on your video and turn off your video. So those are a couple of the the first functions um, that are most helpful. If you if you know those functions and you're and you're ca calling into something, then you're you're pretty good. So I think if you're sort of training another set of group or you're welcoming a new group into Zoom, making sure you just point out where those buttons are, mm. that will that will take care of it. You'll you'll be in good shape after that point. Um, as you can see, there's probably additional buttons that are down the on the bottom here um, on 
on my screen than what's on your screen. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I'm sharing this is what this image is because this is what a host will often see. So as as the the deemed host of this meeting, which typically is the person who schedules the meeting, although um, Megan sort of you can also adjust the host throughout as needed it means I have a couple more functionalities um, like I can mute you all or I can unmute you all I have some some additional powers there um, and so you'll see down here at the bottom a couple of ones that I want to call out the chat we saw the chat bubble that we just tested and um, that we are are using right now a lot the um, manage participants or it says participants for you so right now if you clicked on that you could go ahead and scroll through and see all the different names that are on here um, and that's where as a right now if i needed to mute everyone or unmute everyone i could do that within that participants little area um, you're able to record um, so there's a record button there and then uh, at the um, there's also a breakout rooms button, which I'm gonna I'm gonna share a little bit more about that in a little bit, so I won't spend too much time. So a lot of the functionalities as a host down at the bottom of what you want to be doing and what we'll talk about later, including that green share screen, is is where you see it at the bottom. Some of those buttons you'll have on your screen right now, and some of them you won't. The to exit a meeting at the bottom right, both for you now, you could don't click it now, but you could click on leave meeting and you would it would you would leave meeting, or I, I could click on end meeting and it would go ahead and end the meeting for everyone actually. Um, and that's at the bottom right on a on a computer. And then at the top right on a computer is this um, button that says either speaker view or gallery view. Do you folks see that? So if you click on that, um, it allows you to either see just if I if I'm the person talking right now in when it's in speaker view, um, then you just see me as a pretty big vi video. Um, and I know I'm presenting, so it would be me and the, the presenting. Or if you do gallery view, you're able to see multiple videos at once. Um, I typically encourage the gallery view that you sort of make sure that you can see all the different faces because then especially for a group here, it's is the best the closest thing to sitting in a circle together. Um, so you're able to see all, all faces at the same time. I'm going to pause here for questions on any of these functionalities or things that you might be seeing differently on your screen. Oh, this is Jack. And I just wanted to say that we can't see the gallery uh, or participant view when, when you've got the system. You're um, sharing a screen with us. Right. Yep. So you should. I think, do you still see my video? Yes, you see that fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so it won't be the full gallery. Sometimes I think it will show like four videos or something if it fits, but um, you are totally, you're totally right that it's not the full gallery, which um, when we go back, when I stop presenting, we'll see, um, we'll see a full gallery. The you can see up to 25 in, in one room. Uh, Patricia, I see your, your hand raised. Yes, when we, when we were doing the chat, mine came out as from me to everyone. <laughs> yes. You can change that. Well, where do, where do I change it? Yeah, so the, um, the chat there. window right now is only set up so that you can chat only with everyone. So that means like everyone in the meeting will be able to see those chats. Mm -hmm. There is also uh, a setting yeah. where you can chat, um, the, the, you can chat privately. The and so, two button, the two button, if you click on that, it, you can choose you as or everyone. Right, you can just either send a message to just me as the host right now, or you can send a message to everyone. There is a setting, and usually it's a default setting. We just have it turned off right now, where you could chat privately to someone else. Um, so, like Barbara could chat to Carol and and go ahead and, and send a message just to that only Carol can see. Um, so that is a function. We have it turned off because that's that's something that for privacy sake is or for security sake is a little bit um, higher security to be able to have that turned off. Um, and so. Is that in the initial settings? It is in the initial settings and you can change it in the meeting right now. So actually here's what I can do is I can go ahead and change. I can change 
to be able to, now you should be able to see, if you click on that in everyone, you should be able to see a whole list of participants. Gotcha. And, um, and so you'd be able to. Is that a host yeah. function? That's a host function, exactly, okay. to turn it on and off. I guess that my question was, if you look at the chat, other people, it says from Annette, Sally, to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, mine says from me to everyone. From me, me. to, oh, <laughs> well, to, yes. From me. <laughs> and how do I get I know. It? <laughs> it sounds a Hey, Alex, this is Nebu. Yeah. So, Patricia, the, so to me, yours says from Patricia with your last name that I'm not going to go. Oh. Yeah. So it's just oh. kind of like a way for you to distinguish what you sent versus what other people sent. So to you, to me, uh, yep. you look great. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you on many levels. <laughs> uh, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the um, private chat just to make sure because I know this is um, some folks are joining um, from a bunch of different spaces Sorry, and Yes. Uh, what happens if you get a lot of feedback? Is that when people have their speaker too loud? That is when they have their speaker too loud or maybe not headphones pull, fully plugged in or um, if you have like multiple um, headphones sometimes do help with that if there is feedback. Um, it kind of or, or it's kind of recommended that people have headphones because then they can reduce that feedback. I think so, because sometimes some laptops will like yeah, not one, pick up sound had, the best. Yeah, I had one a couple of days ago, and somebody was getting a, we were getting a lot of feedback. So stuff you know, with the latency of the you know the links, it can start echoing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just reviewing just to see if there's any other questions in the chat window, and my then I'm gonna keep. I keep. What was that, Maria? How would I remove my picture from um, the side view and let somebody else's picture come in there? Oh, so good, Will. What? I think that, so you should be able to most usually see your your video. If you right click on your, your video, um, uh -huh. so uh, yeah, if you right click on it, you should be able to say like, um, Stop video. Hide, yeah, stop video, or you could hide yourself, I think. But um, it's just often you'll see yourself and see the speakers first, or the like videos you'll see at the top. Um, you can scroll up and down too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's there's some arrows where you're able to click through and see all the faces across the screen. Okay, thanks. And there's a divider line in the middle of the screen. You can move the. Uh, shared screen over and more people appear on the, on the screen. Yes, Russ, that's that. I'm not sure is for everyone. I'm not sure if everyone okay. has has that okay. depending gotcha. on, are you are you logged in, Russ, via the web page or do you have the um, an application? Uh, I have the Zoom application. Okay. I'm not sure if that's on the web page, to be honest. Yeah. So that's why I mentioned it. But I will, I'll mention it now is you should be able to, there's some, some of you might be able to have sort of a bar where you're able to pull over to the right or the left. It's in between the presentation and then the videos. And so for example, we've been on the slide for a while. So if you're like, I don't want to see the slide anymore. I want to see more faces. You could pull it over to the side. Um, that's what Russ is talking about, but I'm not sure if everyone has it. Um, so I'm going to keep mo us moving and um, definitely keep interrupting with questions. This is a good, good sort of test of all the all the different features on our screen. Um, now I want to go to what I'm doing exactly right now is screen sharing and talk a little bit about how you do that. Um, so actually, most folks should be able to see, I think, see a button on your at the bottom of the, your screen that says um, that says be like share your screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually something that not only a, a host can do, but everyone can do as long as the, the setting is not turned off. It should be automatic that anyone can do it. Um, so especially in a meeting, what's good about that is you could have someone else share their screen as needed. If they were doing the reading, for example, and have it on their screen, they could share it even if you were the host. Um, this, when you click on share screen at that, that green button at the bottom, 
it'll have a little pop-up window where that pop-up window gives you something that looks like this this picture here where there's a couple of screens um, and you are to select which screen you want so right now I have I have two screens so like screen one and screen two I can select between those it will also show you if you have different applications open so it ha if you have a web page open and a word document open um, it will show those as options I think it's easiest just to go ahead and click on your screen and then anyone can see it what's on your screen what you do need to be, pay attention to is make sure that there's nothing you don't want people to see on your screen. Um, but that's easiest if you, especially if you're moving between maybe showing a reading um, and showing a video um, and switching between applications. Right. The message I have is you cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing. Yes, so I, I would have to stop sharing my, my screen and we at the end if folks want to play around with that we can test it sort of in our Putting so it in action. You, so can you only share one, one screen at a time? I, I think that's a setting that's turned on right now. I think there is a setting where you can share. Is, does, it both have, does the host have priority? What was that? Does the host have priority? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think I might have to appro like approve your screen or something like that. Okay. Um, that's a good safety feature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's easier and safer to have just the host being able to um, post. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Alex, so are you saying that um, you have to have your, before you um, open up Zoom, you've got to have on your computer the windows that you want to share? You've got to open those up first? You don't have to open those up first. You can open them up afterwards. Um, so if I, if I had this document on my desktop and I started to present, um, I could open it up af afterwards. Does that, does that answer your question? Well, it answers my question, then, then I'm thinking, okay, now, how would I do that? <laughs> um, you, you so I have to minimize, Nancy. I have found that it's easier for me to have the things open that I want to share. Um, but there, but mm -hmm. to Alex's point, you can get to all your documents after you go on. Um, you just have to minimize your screen and then you can get to your toolbar at the bottom. Oh, okay. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. So here, there's a couple of things that um, I want to highlight. So I know that a lot of videos are shown in Just Faith Ministries programming. Um, and so when you are, when you have this pop-up screen on your screen before you hit share, if you're planning to um, share a video, it um, is helpful to check off this share computer sound uh, little checkbox. Um, that's the most important because that's the way that you're able to, to make sure that the computer sound is heard. After you start sharing, there is a way to still turn it on, but that is something that um, if you're like, if your participants can't hear your video, that's um, the, uh, um, that is the way that like to be able to turn it on and make sure that folks know um, that you are you're able to test it live is what I'm saying. So if folks aren't hearing your video, you can go ahead and make sure that that is turned on so you can play your video. Um, Alex, could I interrupt real quickly? I know some of you on the phone might be, um, might not be aware, and especially if you came in a couple minutes late, we are recording this and we will send the link out to everybody that's registered. So mm -hmm. you'll get that um, if, if you want to watch rather than um, taking notes. So I just wanted to interject with that. And, and you'll get the, this document afterwards too. Alex, I just have one question on the sound then when you're sharing your screen. Mm -hmm. Just clicking on that one box that you just identified, um, does that um, enhance the sound? Um, I know that there have been a couple of times when we've shared a YouTube mm -hmm. and the sound just comes across uh, very poorly. Um, so I'm wondering if that was the problem, that we need to check that box to allow that sound to come through. 
you um, you do need to check that that box to make sure it's coming through. Um, I'm not sure. I've had mixed experiences myself with YouTube videos um, in Zoom. And so a couple of workarounds, I, I know I was talking to Susie and the team about this, a couple of workarounds is you can either the you can one one option is show your video on your screen and share it. Um, another option is if you have that link to the video, just going going ahead and chat sending it in the chat so that everyone can open it at the same time and say it's a 10 minute video. Say, okay, everyone open it and watch it. We'll come back in the next like 11, 12 minutes once everyone's watched it on their own devices. Oh, okay. um, so that's a good workaround to do it in the middle of the meeting. Um, or you can even e email it instead of putting it in the chat window, depending on what's more accessible. Um, and and or have folks watch it before the meeting. I know that it's it's typical to do it within the meeting, but um, that's another option of just asking people to spend some time to do it before. Okay. Yeah. And Alex, this is Susan. Um, one thing we have found is sometimes sharing the video in advance is good because um, there's so much material to cover while you're on the meeting that that streamlines it and people can mm -hmm. watch it at their leisure and absorb it and then focus on the discussion when you're together. So that is a real good option. Absolutely. A lot of um, sort of e-learning experts, which this is a different environment than learning or teaching, is that um, sort of it's less time than we less time online than we would typically have in a classroom. So less lecture time, if you will, that and than we would typically have in a classroom, just because it sort of our ability to absorb information and be engaged virtually is a little bit less than it is in person. Um, so that's actually a really good learning and um, engagement tool is is having it having it before too for um, and making those meetings a little bit shorter. When you are screen sharing, so I've, I've moved to a, a next slide here. When you are screen sharing, um, you are still able to access some of these tools. So this is where I'm, uh, if I hover over, like right now, I'm able to see the chat window. I'm able to see the, the participants list and mute folks. Um, and those are, it, um, if you, you have to sort of hover your mouse at the top of your screen in order to get this bar um, to pop up. And so that's where you can find what typically is at the bottom of your screen in your, when you're not presenting, you can find that same bar. Um, so what's important is your, this tip, this is typically if you're just pre presenting so that you can do a reading together or watch a video together, you likely won't need much of this, but um, just so you know where, where to find it. And this is also where if you're already presenting and you need to share the computer sound, I could go ahead and you, if you click on this more button, it will have a drop down where there's an option for share your computer sound. Um, so there's always sort of a backup there if you did forgot to click it on the first screen. Um, I won't speak too much more to that because I think that's both, I think, being able to present, just being able to click the button, make sure you get the the the, um, the screen up that you need, and be able to present that um, is is sort of the biggest biggest need that you have. And then you will notice that this little green bar and red bar with the stop share that's always on the top of my screen. Um, so I'm able to just click stop share whenever I'm done. So I was just you just need to find that button, and you can go ahead and stop share, and everything goes back to um, as it was before. Any final questions about screen sharing? If you have two monitors, you can see some of those other things in the second monitor. Yes. So if if you are lucky enough to have a second monitor and sort of nimble in that, like that's I I love that I can see twenty five of your faces right now on one screen and look like I'm being able to sort of look at you and I can see my screen as a reference here that I'm presenting. That's really great. Um, but not, not necessary either. I, you can, just a, a fun thing to have or a helpful thing to have. And uh, some, I'm not sure I'm gonna try it, but I was gonna put you guys on my TV set so I had more uh, space. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really advanced. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you have an external, you have an HDMI connector on the side of your computer and you punch it into one of the HDMI inputs in your, in your mm -hmm. smart TV. <laughs> yes. Um, my parents have been presenting me on their big TV recently. I don't know how I feel about that exactly, but it's, it's a way to be able to see more faces. <laughs>
So I'm going to um, move us into our next functionality, um, breakout rooms. So this is, this is kind of a um, nice, um, a nice feature to be able to have some smaller conversations. Um, but it also, if this, if I actually, this applies to most things. If any of these things, I meant to say this earlier, if any of these things feel like, oh my goodness, I don't, I don't know how to, how I would do this, or this feels really stressful or overwhelming, you can really easily just, as long as you get on the phone and turn on your videos and have a conversation, that's a huge win in and of itself. So these are things that are helpful that will add more to your, to your meetings. And I want to make sure that um, if anyone's alarms are going off in your head, um, don't, don't worry about this. Um, so cool. this, I'm, I'm going to voice over what it looks like to open breakout rooms, and then I'm going to send you to some breakout rooms. Um, what this means is that, like, I will literally send you off. We talked about Harry Potter. I've often been saying, like, like flu powder, if anyone reads the books, of sort of like a magical portal to, like, send you off into these, like, personal little rooms. Um, they can be as big as small or small as you want. Um, and for example, um, you can make them automatically. So it's just going to be a sort of a random assortment of people. So what I'm going to do in a moment, I do need to stop presenting in order to do this. Um, so I'm going to share with, with you the steps I would take, and then I'm going to stop presenting and actually do the steps. Um, you, there's a breakout room button on the bottom of your, on your taskbar. If you have host. Host. Yeah, exactly, as a host, as we saw earlier. And so we are, I, if I click on that, this little pop-up in the number one shows up. Um, and I'm able to sort into a, any number of rooms. And what we'll, if I click automatically at the bottom, it'll say, OK, that means three to four participants per room. So right now, we have 60 people on the line. So if I put it into six rooms, it'd be 10 people per room. Um, and so it sort of it will change that number as you increase it. Once I click breakout rooms, the second screen will show up that looks like um, the one in three, where there's created this list of breakout rooms where people are going to be sent. Um, there is this options um, setting where you, you want to open that options and if you wanted to set sort of a timer or something along those lines. But really, most simply, if you create the breakout rooms and then just say start all sessions as long as the list looks right, um, you, that will automatically send people out into those breakout rooms. Um, and then once people are in those breakout rooms, you'll see that they, there's like a little green dot that will turn green next to their name. You as a host won't get sent to those rooms, um, although you can then join those rooms if you wanted to join one of the small conversations. Um, and then there, there will be just a button to say stop all sessions and that when any, everyone gets automatically brought back to the big group. Um, so what we're going to do is experience this and I'm going to see what questions there are. So I'm going to send you into breakout rooms. Um, you'll see a little, as you as a participant are going to see a little window that pops up and says, um, we're going to, I'm going to send you to breakout room one or two or whatever. Go ahead and click on accept. Um, in your small group, um, it'll, it'll um, make it a pretty small group just to, because this will be a, just a quick test. Um, introduce yourself and share, share where you're from, where you're living right now, just so that we sort of get an understanding of who across, how many places across the country are joining right now. Um, and this will, be, this will be real quick. So I apologize if I cut off conversations. Um, this is mostly to test the feature. Um, and I know that um, we would all love to connect with each other a little bit longer, so, but I'm going to make it quick. So I'm going to go ahead and stop, start with, oh, no, I am not. Um, so this is a good, yes. Um, this is a good lesson is that it uh, needs to be turned on in the settings to be able to have breakout rooms turned on. And I don't think this, this account has the breakout room setting turned on quite yet, um, which is okay. We won't test it right now. Um, but we, I, I, if there's interest in making sure that we can test this afterwards, we can, we can figure out a way to do that. Um, but you'll have to trust me that it looks like sort of just, you get sort of pulled into an, an into another little small room and then you, then you come back. Um, what questions do, do folks have about breakout rooms right now? Hey Alex, like when, so just 
in your experience, would have you used this to, I don't know, like, like let's say there's a group of 10 in, in a session where you want to say, okay, you guys go off and discuss the reading for two minutes, like, and you, and that's how you would use it? Yeah, it's really helpful. So for example, the warm up question that we all did, if I wanted everyone to answer that, I could have said, okay, I want everyone to answer that question. So I'm going to send you into break off rooms and trios. So the room will just have three people in it. And I want you to introduce yourself and say, share your answer and then talk a little bit about it. And then I'll bring you back. Um, it's really great for smaller discussions, or if you need to break off into different discussions, um, you can do it where it's just pairs where just people who are um, pairs in, um, in discussions. Um, or if you just needed to break the group into two, you can go ahead and just break them into two. Um, so really good for when you don't want everyone, not that you don't want everyone, but you it would benefit for a smaller group conversation. Thank you. Any other questions about breakout rooms? I know that one, this one's a little bit trickier, so we can um, we can talk about it more in the Q&A towards the end too. Alex, um, I had a question. Yes. About, um, you said something about accepting, one has to accept it and enter. I've been on some of these Zoom conversations where it just directly takes you, but I was also on a phone. Is there a difference the way phones and computers operate in that function? Is it a new, a new function? Um, when you were on a phone, were you called in like on a phone number, like a, rather than um, like through an application or anything? Good question. I'm not sure I was using an app. Did you like, did you call in on a phone number, I guess? Mm -hmm. So it took me directly right into the room. Yes. So, so I think if you're called in on a phone number, um, it will just bring you into the room because there's not a way to sort of accept or not. Um, and so it, it will just um, send you into that room and, and then bring you back afterwards. Was that your experience when you did it before? Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. That's a helpful. I haven't experienced that one, so that's a helpful question. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Uh, this is Jean. And just in the interest of saving time, when you're getting ready to have a meeting and you know you're going to break into small groups, can you, before the meeting starts, mm -hmm. set up your small groups? Great question. Um, you, the short answer you, is you can, although um, it doesn't quite work unless everyone has a Zoom account um, with, and you have their emails that their Zoom account is attached to. Um, so there's a way to be able to set, in a moment I'm gonna sh actually share um, where we can set some of the settings and um, schedule meetings. And so in the settings of a meeting, you can you can create pre-create breakout groups, but I will let you know if, if folks don't have a Zoom account and you don't have the emails that are tied to that, it won't work. I actually tested that last last week and it didn't didn't work for me unfortunately. Okay. So I am gonna go ahead and keep us moving into some Zoom settings. So this is where um, settings are, again, if you don't play around with settings, at the end of the day, you're gonna be just fine. And it's a helpful, um, a helpful thing to spend some time taking a look at just so that you know what, what uh, things are, what settings are available to you and to make sure sort of the highest security and you are able to get what you want to. So what I'm gonna, do is share um, my, it's making me log in, so give me one moment. Share my Zoom account. And so this is, if you were serving as a facilitator, um, this is where uh, you would see sort of your Zoom meetings and be able to schedule them. So this is, if I logged into my, my Zoom account, you're able to see um, here on my screen, um, this is the meetings screen, so it shows the, the meetings that are coming up. Um, but if I go ahead to settings, this is where, this is the best place to set all of your settings. And as you can see, there's a whole host of settings. So if you really wanna geek out on settings, go for it. And at, this, at the end of the day, um, you're gonna be just fine if you, if you don't set many of these settings. What I've done for you is um, highlighted a couple of settings that I think matter most for this group. Um, 
So, and a couple of these are tied to the security needs as well. So don't forget to turn off the join before host and turn on the waiting room. So that means that um, this, it wasn't turned on for this meeting, but a way to make sure sort of you know who's joining is turn on um, a waiting room so that you're um, accepting folks as they come in and, and you're the first person to the meeting, if you will. Um, turning on mute participants upon entry is a good way to just sort of make sure that um, that like there's not a lot of outside noise coming in at the beginning. We talked about these chat settings, so chatting with everyone. Um, I would recommend that you turn make sure that's turned on, but turning off private chats and files um, allows allows a little bit of heightened security there. So just it means that then you as a host are the main owner of any of that chat window. Um, as you as you can see here, turning on the breakout rooms is if you want to use that, you need to turn that on in your settings from from your account. Um, and these last two ones, um, the you have that, uh, you know, the uh, waiting room set, you got to remind the host that they have to click and admit people one at a time. Right. Um, so when there is a waiting room, it will show at, um, in your participants panel that we saw earlier that there's people joining and you'll have to admit them or you can alternatively turn off the waiting room and just, and there's a, oh, okay. Um, so there's, there'd be three little dots like you've seen in your, maybe your chat window, the three little dots of, there's a button that you're able to turn off the chat window um, as a host, or sorry, turn off the, um, the waiting room as a host. Um, and then these last two ones are, are helpful from a, an accessibility standpoint of turning on, this I think would be the, uh, the, the one setting that if you can turn it on, I would turn it on, make sure you have it on, is turn on the join from a browser link. And so that means that someone is able to join um, join your call from any browser and not it doesn't need to have the Zoom application in order to log into it. So that's a really important one. Um, and another support like security one is turning on mask your phone number in the participant list. So those are these are all settings that are in that long list that if you're scrolling through, um, you should be able to find. Again, if you don't play around with any of these settings, you're going to be okay. Um, and you all sort of like do a little bit of testing and t like trial and error, if you will, of you're like, oh, I didn't have the breakout rooms. I need to go turn on that setting. Um, so that's a good way to approach it as well. Alex? Yes. Alex? Yes. Quick question. Uh, this is Paul Mandel from Minnesota. And I first came on by Facebook because it was all full mm -hmm. on the Zoom. And I think I might have pressed share. So you have about 10 of my local friends that are observing. Now, when you do both Zoom and Facebook, I noticed my comments were going to Susan. And on Zoom, they go to you. Is that right? How does that work? Is it so I think that's just a matter of the Facebook account. Um, okay. Your comments are going to the Facebook account owner, and I'm like, I'm the host of the meeting right now, so you're Got able it. to send me meeting, like, me. I've not been on a Zoom meeting before that was shared like that, so that's why I was. I wondering. can I can say something too. Hi, Paul. Um, yeah. So we're basically taking the Zoom meeting, and we are projecting it onto Facebook. It's a completely different platform, but okay. it's a way. For, so when you write comment, when you wrote comments on Facebook, it's just yep. seen on Facebook. It's not seen here. Got it. Well, you've got some other people benefiting from this show. So. Cool. <laughs> Love it. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> um, in the in the interest of time, I'm going to go through these last couple of things, and then definitely we'll hang out for questions and answers. But I I don't want to. I know folks have evenings to get get on with as well. Um, so this, um, I just wanted to highlight what it looks like to schedule a meeting. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's in that same, if you go to the, your Zoom account, um, that screen I was just showing um, prior, prior about the settings. Um, and instead you go to the meetings tab there and click on schedule a new meeting and you just need to make sure you fill out the fields most critically, the, the time, the date, updating the name if you need to, um, and any sort of settings. So that's another really good check. There's like a quick, a quick um, list of settings that like are most important for that most people are usually turning on or off for a meeting. Um, so that's a quick way to just check, are there any, like it's like a list of six things that you wanna check on or off. And then once you save that and it's been scheduled, 
the way that Zoom works is you all logged in via a link for the most part, or maybe you called in on the phone. Um, so once you save that, it'll, it'll create a, um, a link that you're able to share out. Um, and the way that you can share it out is there's often a, a Gmail or an Outlook button that's there on your account that you can click and it'll open up a meeting request if that's your, if you're familiar with a, like a calendar request for either of those email clients. Um, or you can just go ahead and click the invitation uh, or click copy the invitation and there's a way that you can just click the link and if you wanted to send it in a text message or send it in a Facebook message or send it in any, you're able to just get that link that you need. Um, paste it. And just, yep, just copy it and paste it into a message to someone and so they should be able to join it um, at the time that you have scheduled. Questions about that? This, I, I'm going to highlight one thing about keeping Zoom secure and then let folks read sort of what's in here because um, it also talks on some of the settings we've already talked about. When you are thinking about scheduling a Zoom meeting, I, one of the biggest things, and we just talked about that link being the way that you log into a meeting. Um, if you were to say post that link onto your Facebook page, that means anyone who uh, on your Facebook on your Facebook, who's a friend of yours, would be able to open that link and join the meeting. So when I, what I would advise with, um, with, with Zoom links is making sure that you are um, not publicly, publicly posting them. Um, so just sending them to the folks who need to log in on that link. Um, and off, when you're scheduling, it will offer the opportunity to set a password and that just makes it the link both longer. So you're, there's still a link where it's a single click link um, or there's sometimes we'll be asked, you'll ask for a password and you can set that password and it's a way to just add an extra layer of security. Um, because as typical Zoom link is just nine numbers after a Zoom URL, it's just zoom.us slash nine numbers. And so when we think about that, like anyone can kind of type in any nine numbers that they want. And that's, that's also how some folks have been able to access things. So by adding that password, it just makes that link much longer and no one can really randomly access that link. So those, that's like the top tip is don't post it publicly and add the password if you're able to um, onto your, your meeting links. And then there's some other settings that we, many of which we've already talked through with the chat window about the ability to present, um, turn, turning folks on mute um, that I would, would encourage as well. So again, this will, um, I know Susie will be sending out and making sure that this deck is available. So this, um, I, uh, I will make sure that folks have. Nabu, do you have a question? Yeah. Hey, Alex, this is something that kind of confused me. So when you say you add a password, that doesn't mean that like a participant has to type in a password, right? So there's, there's two ways there. It creates a, a like a longer link with a bunch of, um, it creates a longer link that includes the password in it. It also, if you're to give them the shorter link, the one with just nine numbers, then the password is required to add to, for the participant to add in there. So if you just give them the, the long link. A long link, you don't need a password or you don't need to, the participant doesn't need to type in the password. Thank you. So my last thing here is again, more of a resource for folks. And then I'm, I'm just gonna open it up for additional questions and answers is, um, there's a couple more slides in this in this deck that help thinking about just what does it look like to transfer your sessions to virtual. Um, so we talked about the video. Uh, here is just an example of the activities that are typically in your um, in your meetings, correct? And then some virtual adaptations. You'll notice that like announcements, reading, discussions, spiritual practice, those don't require any changes really in terms of technology. Um, I know that there's additional tips and materials provided um, by Just Face Ministries around this. But when we're thinking about any of the shared readings or, um, or videos, sharing a video, those are the two ways that, um, or two moments where there might need a little bit more tech. So for example, sharing, uh, doing a shared reading the um, you can share the reading on your screen just like I am now and then as long as the font is big enough um, I could go ahead and read the first line and then pass it on to to Russ to read the next line and, and go on from there um, 
you could also send the file, like send the file to folks either in the email prior to the meeting or in the chat window. That way, everyone can open up their own copy on their phone or iPad or what have you. Um, so those are those are a couple of uh, ways you can approach that because I know that it happens in many meetings. The um, a tip here is because you were not sitting in a circle where we'd be like, oh yes, just pass it to the right the person on your right. I'd make sure to say. So you either pre-assign the readers and put their names in there um, or ask participants to just say after you've finished it, um, I finished my reading and then I say, okay, Nancy, next next is you. Is you. Um, so that's just a, a tip to keep, keep that smoothly running. The video we already talked about, I think the best, the best backup there, I think it can be spotty, like it can be spotty when you are sharing a video on your screen. It's been a mixed bag of experiences on my, on my experience. Um, so I do recommend just sending a link to a video if you have it in advance, um, as we were talking through earlier, or sending it in the chat window. So I think those are, those are some highlights that I would, I would um, add to here. And um, from that, I am now, I'm gonna stop presenting. Um, I sort of have reached the end of my content and um, really just want to hear uh, what what other folks needs are or any questions that we have and I've, I've really appreciated spending this time with you all it's been been uh, been a lot of fun at least did you show folks where to raise their hand in case somebody has a a question, there's a... I did not voice it over, but I can say it right now. So at, at the bottom of your screen right now, there's two things. You should be able to see a reactions button where you can go ahead and clap and give a thumbs up. So that's a good way of like, everyone should be able to automatically have that. Um, so that is, um, if you ever wanted someone to be like, hey, hey, is everyone, everyone on board? And just give me a thumbs up. You can ask people to do that. Then on the, if you click that participants panel again, again at the bottom, um, there should be an option uh, to raise your hand um, if you, um, I actually, because I'm the host, I'm not seeing exactly where it is on this one. Um, but it should be if you hover over your hand, yeah. over your own um, name it's here. below all the names. It's below, below the, the list names. of names and okay, above great. the group chat. Great. Yeah. Awesome. And so I as a participant or I as a host, I'm able to see, can you all see each other's raised hands right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can, I can see the hands, you can see the hands and also like you can just in a video, raise your hand too. Um, and uh, just so that folks know, there is a way to add a couple of different, you can raise your hand, but there's also like a slow down or speed up or a couple of other options that's in like more advanced uh, settings, that would be a setting you turned on, but um, if you're really getting into the, se the settings, that's another thing you can turn on. Alex, I, uh, this is John. I've had um, uh, the privilege of having this with, first time with a lot of people. And um, one of the tips that, that I would suggest for everyone is uh, to basically reach out to everyone to see if they have used the system beforehand through an mm -hmm. email. And mm -hmm. then if they haven't, walk them through it. And, and you may even have to make a personal one-on-one -on -one conference call, Zoom call. And that, that has worked uh, very well um, with some of my family members that I've done that with, uh, and most of them not being very technically literate. Mm -hmm. um, it, it saved a tremendous amount of disaster time, um, which would have been used during that time we could have shared together. So, it, you know, if you're going to have a meeting um, mm -hmm. first time with a lot of people who've never done it before, it'd be best to have one session with each individual. I know it takes a little time, but if you don't, you're going to end up having a lot of questions and you'll miss the opportunity to have what you wanted to do in your session. That's a great tip, John. Yep. is like, just say, hey, we're going to hop on and test it out together real quick, and it will reduce a lot of anxiety there if there is, if there is that anxiety. Absolutely. Um, and Alex, also I, something too, like we're, oh, sorry, Susie, go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to say, now that everybody actually knows where the chat feature is, I, I, I invited you all earlier, you know, um, we are looking for a couple of uh, facilitators for a virtual engaging spirituality group that we're going to host um, at Just Faith Ministry. So if you have an interest in that, um, you know, you can send me an email at Susie at JustFaith.org. Um, but I also wanted to say before Megan chimes in here, Megan is uh, Megan Kaplan is our marketing manager. So uh, she's been chiming in here. Um, uh, so uh, just to let you know. Um, it, but also on this call still is Leela Oakley, our outreach and engagement associate. If you, um, if you all, um, I don't know uh, if Leela, you want to put yourself on video and wave. Um, Great. Yes, she, I am on video. She is. Uh, so she's your go-to person for facilitation questions. And then our director of programs, Kristen Dollar, is also on. Uh, I don't know if you want to put yourself on video, Kristen, but um, if you have specific questions about our programming, um, you know, we'll, we'll all stick around too. So. And I was just going to say too, that if you're trying to work with your group to understand Zoom, we are going to, we're like, as we pointed out, we're recording this call today. We're going to have a lot of instructional things on the website that you could share with your participants to help them understand how to use Zoom. So um, Susan Chapman, um, our resource director, has created a really great kind of library. So we'll be sharing that in the coming weeks with you guys that you could, like John, if you wanted to share it with your small group first and then have those calls with them, you know, at least that could get them moving. So we're going to have resources on our end too that you can have access to to share. Any other questions or does anyone want to test out a feature right now, like sharing their screen or something? There's Now's the time to test. There, if you put the pointer on a person's name, there's a blue box in the right upper right hand corner, and it has a chat or pin video. Mm -hmm. So what do those do? So those will, if the chat is turned on so that you can chat with people privately, that's that will help you chat to someone privately in the in the window. So. Um, mm -hmm. We'll just make sure that you turned it on for that person, or like it will direct to, to that, that person. person. And then um, pin. the pin video means that if if you wanted to make sure that my video was always on the screen, even if I wasn't talking, you could pin it just to make sure it's always on the front your front screen in that way. Um, and then as a host, that that list of that three when you click on the three dots there, that list is longer. So right now it says like. For me, there's I can unmute or stop video, um, or can mute someone, can chat them as well, um, and this is also how you can make someone else a host. So this is where so Megan actually scheduled this meeting and was the host of this meeting, but then moved the ho like the host capabilities over to me. Um, so that's how that's how she was able to do that. Is the host positioned anywhere in this you know queue of pictures specifically, or just Matter of entry as to where you are on the screen. Can you ask that again? Sorry, I missed a little bit of it. Where is your when the position of your picture on the screen, or you know, mm -hmm. is that based on how you enter the queue? Yeah. I think so. That and who's talking, and people will kind of shuffle around. Okay. So um, the queue could appear off screen, possibly, right? The yes. So like. Right now, we can only see 25 videos, but there's actually right. more videos on right now. So you're able to sort of click that to the left and or to click to the right and see more people, including right. people who are not on video right now. It just seems it would be helpful to have the position of the host always appear somewhere, uh, you know. I think I think I think it naturally kind of appears at the top. I'm not positive on that, but I don't know right. where I show up on your screens. <laughs> Alex, sorry if I'm repeating what you made clear, but I was transitioning um, from mm -hmm. Facebook. When you want to share a screen, what kind of format do you have to have the material in? Do you have it a file or what? It it doesn't matter. I'm you're able to present anything that's on your on your desktop um, on the screen. So a file, a web page, a video, um, any sort of document. Okay. 
What's the difference between stop video and hide self view? So this is, that's a great question. That I think goes to someone's question earlier about like, I always see my face um, and I, <laughs> what if I don't want to see my face? If you mm -hmm. say, if you click on the hide, that means then you won't look at your own video um, and you make space for you seeing more videos. So if it's distracting, sometimes it's distracting for folks to see themselves on video because they're stressed about how they're looking and they keep watching themselves. Um, so that's a way to just hide your video from yourself, but people can still see it. So I think um, this is, seems like sort of obvious, but I think it, it, in my experience of Zoom calls, particularly with any larger than five people, mm -hmm. it's really helpful if all the participants mute themselves except when they're talking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, Zoom is a great service because it's really easy to mute and unmute. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, for, for me, one of the most helpful tips is just reminding folks to, and you can do it as the host, but to have it be interactive, I think it's actually better if people learn to mute and unmute themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. It forces them to consider the group. Yes, also, I think that... Also avoids a lot of echo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the last one I had, we were really echoing it. It was really very disturbing. And that's another thing that you can add to sort of your virtual expectations for your group too. If there's like something where you're like, hey, our, our, our norm, our expectation, our guideline is, is that we're all going to be on mute um, unless we're speaking. That's like another thing to remind the group of. It's really helpful to do. Someone else is going to speak up. Alex, I was just going to say that I think sometimes um, people actually misinterpret the words that are either on their box or down below in the left hand corner. So when it says unmute, they think they're mm. like, it, it's just the reverse is, is understood. And so there are often times, you know, live for all of us when they think they're actually on mute. I wonder if you could say something about that to make it clear. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, it's it is a little bit opposite. Um, so right now, if it says mute on, um, it is that you click on the button to make the action. It's like to make the action happen. So right now, if you see speaker view at the top, um, that means that you see, you actually are seeing gallery view, but if you want to switch to speaker view, which would just show me speaking or whoever speaking, um, we would switch to that. Um, and same with mute. I think the clearest thing for mute and video is if there's a red line through then it will it, it indicates mm -hmm. that it, it is off so I think that rather than the wor words is the clearest is if there's a line through your video or a line through your your microphone then those are off A small change might be to have the two buttons up at the right. One is um, gallery and one is speaker mirror, both up there. And when you select it, it would be highlighted or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. We can send Hi, everybody. Too. I'm Renee. I'm Renee. viewing from uh, Colorado. And I'm also practicing with a headset. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm actually speaking through my computer or the mouthpiece on my headset. Mm. Can you hear me at all? We can hear you for sure. Unplug your headset and then talk. Unplug my headset? Okay. Yeah. No talk. I've unplugged my headset. Can you hear me? Both ways. So I yeah, think I'm you. speaking through my computer mm -hmm. speakers now. There's right. So if you, if you, if you, and now I'm listening to you through the headset. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this cuts out the background noise. Right. Where's your, where's your headset speaker? Right. Where's your microphone? It's right here. Can you unplug but it? But I'm not sure that it's. Can you push it back? You know. Like this. <laughs> 
Or, can't see this yeah, thing. you're touching the microphone, and I feel like we'd hear feedback if so. The way and to, you're not, and well, you're not. not. Yeah. Okay. So the, way the microphone's to, not working at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So the way to adjust that is next to both your mute and your video button. Although this is mostly yeah, appro appropriate for mute. There's a little carrot, a little arrow pointed upwards. In between. The one in, in between. between the mute and yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's oh. a selection of where the microphone and the speaker comes. So the speaker should be uh, what you're hearing. And so it, for me, it says headset earphones right now. And then selecting a microphone, it could say it should say headset microphone as well. Okay, I see. So I'm using the microphone from my computer. Mm -hmm. And this is actually it. the first time I've done Zoom from my computer, I usually do it on my phone. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so I will adjust that the next time. Um, the other question I had is, um, I don't have a Zoom account, and do I need a Zoom account to set up a meeting? You do need a Zoom account to set up a meeting, yes. Okay, because in the last month, as most of us, mm -hmm. I've um, received a link from someone, mm -hmm. and then I've joined the meeting through a browser. Exactly. Um, so if I have an account, will I join the meeting in a different way? You have the option to turn, there is a desktop application that you can download and it um, is free and, and very secure. Um, so that's something you could download if you wanted to, but it's really not necessary. You're able to do everything in, in your browser still. Okay, okay. So, um, so I, I, I've been muted most of the meeting, just sort of practicing here. So now yeah. this is the first time you've heard my voice. <laughs> well, I'm glad, glad you came off mute. Thank you. And Thanks. I will reiterate, folks, um, that, um, and then I see Leela was about ready to say something. Um, I will reiterate, too, a, a Zoom account, the beautiful thing about Zoom is they only charge you monthly. You don't have to sign up for an annual subscription or anything. Um, and the version that we use is $15 a month. So if you're facilitating a program for eight weeks, you know, it basically is going to cost $45, and then you can end your subscription. Um, but you can host meetings all day long in that thing. So it's, it's a really good uh, short-term investment to make. But I also will reiterate that if that is a barrier for anybody, reach out to us and we'll help you get around that barrier. Um, we'll, we'll, you know, we have the ability to do that in this time. I just sure. think individual counts for, for all of you who are representing churches um, and especially if you're representing churches, you might check with your churches if you haven't already. Your church may already have a Zoom account set up and you could set up a meeting in that account. Um, Leela, did you add, want to add something? No, Susie, you covered it. Um, I was just going to suggest that before you purchase a new uh, Zoom account that you check with either, like you said, your church or parish or you check with other participants in the group. Um, you'd be probably surprised by how many people have access to scheduling meetings and that would all that's all you would need is to have uh, the, that two hour window for a meeting. So mm -hmm. definitely check before you you spend that fifteen dollars. And I have a I have a just the basic account, which is no charge. Um, but it has some limits like the meeting is only forty minutes long. Um, and so we go 40 minutes and then we leave the meeting and then we start the meeting up again. <laughs> there, there are workarounds, yeah, but the, yeah. the free version, you do get cut off at 40 minutes uh, to Nancy's point, um, but yeah. you can, you know, set back-to-back -back meetings and everybody logs out and everybody logs back in. So you can terminate your uh, uh, paid thing on a monthly basis? Or is there an yeah. annual contract? No, it's just no monthly. annual contract. It's monthly. And they just made an offer, I believe, for $13.99 something. Yeah. And, and folks, too, in terms of if, if Zoom isn't the way you want to go or if you want to look at some other free um, options, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share another uh, staff person's name, and I don't know if she's, she was facilitating the Facebook call, our registration and resource manager, Susan Chapman. Um, who, if you've ever ordered a book or uh, did, had any website questions, she's the one you've talked to. Um, Susan ha has a list of other platforms that you can explore. 
if you want to look at just other options for video conferencing besides Facebook. So, um, you know, you can absolutely reach out to her. And I think um, we're going to be sending a follow up email and there'll be a link to those resources in that email. So you guys will have access to those. Alex, um, yes. this is Claire. Um, can you explain um, how how to use closed captions on Zoom and you know we've we've been doing this in our deaf family and it works great on Google Meet but we've had trouble mm -hmm. making it work on Zoom. Yes, you should be. So that's something I haven't tested yet. Um, and in your settings, so if you go to your um, your account and go to your settings tab. Um, there is a closed captioning option that you can turn on. Um, and so, but I do believe that they don't, um, I'm not sure what the, the other platform does, but this is not, it doesn't automatically create the closed captions. It requires either um, a, a host have to type the closed captions or um, a, like a third party device of some sort. Um, so I don't know if that's been your experience in the other ones. I think, I don't know how, how it would show up. And I assume it would be different than the chat window and it would allow the host to then type in those closed captions as needed. Um, but that's, that's the extent of what I know. I would say that the uh, Zoom website has a lot of information for like very specific questions. So that's a really helpful place for a lot of FAQs too. Um, Thanks. That's, that's great. No, we do it with um, Google Meet. And I mean, it's astonishing how good their closed cap, you know, automatic translation has become. Yeah, I think that is probably a better in Google than here, to be honest. Um, I don't think that Zoom has that automated closed captioning, um, which is which is a really valid um, tool to consider if if this one doesn't fit. Any other questions for Alex or for us at Just Faith Ministries? Burning questions before we... Alex, um, may we contact you individually? And is your contact information on the slides? It's not on the slides yet, but that's a good point. I, I can go ahead and put that on the slides. Um, and yes, I'd be I'd be happy to to support some questions um, via email. I'll I'll make sure to add that in there. Okay, thank you very much. Um, in Colorado, it's six o'clock in the evening, so have a good evening, everyone. <laughs> and really, really quickly before we get off, um, Renee, thank you for that question. Alex has been so generous to spend uh, her evening with us and answering our questions and offering this tutorial. Um, but I also don't want to overwhelm her with questions. Uh, she does have a full-time job and, and, and a life, even if she is stuck in her home. So if you have questions, um, feel free to send those to me and I can do my best to field those. And then if I need to, I'll connect with Alex since she's um, our expert here. So that might be the best strategy just um, so she doesn't end up with a hundred, a hundred emails in her inbox on, on Monday. Yeah, I was it. Thank you, Lila. I was going to say the same thing. You know, reach out to us first, and then, and then, in, if we uh, find that we can't answer a question, we we can get a hold of Alex and make sure you you get your uh, questions answered. Well, folks, um, I th thank you so much for taking the time out to uh, out of your evenings to be on this webinar. Thank you for all you do for Just Faith Ministries. Um, as I said, I looked at the list of folks that were on this call and um, most of you are seasoned facilitators who have been doing our programs um, for years and so we couldn't be more grateful. It's wonderful to see some of your faces, some of you for the first time. And, um, and Alex, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to do this training and by all means bother us. If you have questions, we are available to help and, and we will do our best um, to get your questions answered. Um, if question. you find yourself um, running into um, issues in terms of the adaptations, reach out to us. Um, Kristen, I, our, our director of programs, Kristen Dollar, who hasn't chimed in yet, but um, she literally can develop things. There she is in about 
30 seconds. You know, we say we need this and then it's in my inbox like an hour later. So uh, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. One, one uh, quick question. Yeah. How, how do you enter the name that's on the screen for the person? How, where does that come from? You can go ahead and um, either click on your the three dots and rename yourself, or you can and do that in the participants panel too. The name comes okay. from, I think, when you log in, you enter a name, I believe. No, I didn't do that. Do you have an account though? No, you just have my first name, which is abbreviated. So I'm just curious. I don't know that. Um, if you ever create, when you create an account originally, or if you set your computer up to be able to log into Zoom, whatever name you give yourself, uh, then um, okay. it sort of sticks with you unless it gets changed. I, yeah. I think that's. Mm -hmm. There was one time when we, when you had to put also you had more things you had to put in like the meeting name and the password, and then ask for a screen name. So, but that's been all automated. So, but. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, folks. Have a have a great night. Again, you're in our thoughts and prayers, and um, and we'll all be in touch with each other. Thank be safe, you. Be well. And and good night to everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Megan, I just made you host again in case that I'm not sure how you're recording, but just in case that if